Good morning, Bookless Classroom. I am here with a bad, bad signal already. 1,400 drop frames as soon as we get started. So I don't know how this is going to end up looking in the end, but cross your fingers. Uh, because that's all we got. Fingers to cross because Xfinity is giving us the big middle fiddle finger. Oh, I'm sorry. Does your money not mean anything? Does your efforts not mean anything? Well, let me tell you something. There's a lot of people who feel exactly the same way, starting with Plessy. What was his first name? What was Plessy's first name? Let's, let's look at that. Homer. Homer Plessy. They asked to ride in a whites only train car. Remember? Yesterday we were talking about it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that a little bit of a review. You know, I wish you would just kick me out and then get me restarted, but you don't. You make us suffer with this choppy connection that you somehow call worth my money. It's not. If you kick me out, I got something to say. But if you make me hang on by a thread, well, I got nothing to say. Uh, and that is like Oakland University, isn't it? Oakland University, just sitting over there throwing mon monkey wrenches into everything. If I ha ask for a leave of absence, then all you need to do is produce the paperwork with my signature on it. I will tell you that a union representative did try and force me into signing a leave of absence. I said, no, you're going to have to fire me. Sorry, you're going to have to fire me because you have no reason why would I take a leave of absence. Have no reason to take a leave of ab absence, oh you. And you knew it. And you know it. And all you're doing is once again being a cog in the system. You hire yourself as a company that's, that is just there to be a third party to be dissolved right after you make it difficult for me to get unemployment. Why? Why? The president herself with her $500,000 salary could pay my unemployment without even batting an eye. Yeah. My unemployment without batting an eye. All of it. All of my unemployment that you get 20 weeks. Woohoo! Big deal. That's a Josh Merchant big bend over because that's the way I like it. Maneuver. Look out, Josh Merchant's behind you. Look out. Okay. Everyone knows it's irritating for me to not have a signal. And uh, they're trying to get, they're just trying to, you know, do that. Irritate me enough to not post. Right? Give me all zeros over there. Nobody's watching except for all of the minutes that are being watched. And as we have zero views, but that popped up, doesn't pop up without a viewer, doesn't come up on the control board without a viewer. How YouTube can you say zero viewers and then make a, a person like Patrick Bet David, what kind of name is that anyway, Rich. On his Wikipedia page, he says he went to Harvard. Yeah, he took classes. So did I. I went to a conference at Harvard as well. Does that mean I graduated from Harvard? Went to a conference. It was a really, really good conference. I believe Cohen spoke at that to talk about the effect, the, the, the effects on health, the positive, positive thinking and the effects on health. So, so the beginning sort of a positive psychology, which of course, as you know, I'm an expert in the field. But right now, in our bookless classroom, we really focus on history. And I gave a kind of a big speech about that yesterday. Oh, look at that, Plessy versus Ferguson and our all-white Supreme Court that decided on that case, right? Woo! Let's see what else we got here. That's not what I wanted to show you, though. We're getting to that one. Not quite yet, though. So, I know. Oh, it didn't look too bad. 
searching. And my bobblehead, oh, I can't even bobblehead because of my neck. My neck is going to go plop, plop, plop. Anyone want to know why my neck is the way it is? My lower back. I see a chiropractor. This is my walking, my ability to walk. Okay, enough of that. So here's our Plessy versus Ferguson. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to highlight the areas of this article. I didn't want to, I did, because I do what I want when I want to. Eh, not so much. Um, so this is actually, and, and don't forget, it's not the, the federal Supreme Court here. It's the Louisiana Supreme Court that it went to. So it went to the state Supreme Court from what I'm gathering here. All right. This is the state Supreme Court of Louisiana, of Louisiana. Okay. The argument. Remember what I was saying? See, it's so interesting to me sometimes the way that our minds can approach something. I see Ferguson's argument. Ferguson was uh, one of the judges in the case, right? One of the judges in the case. Well, I, I guess he was. Who is Ferguson? See, that's the thing here. Ferguson has to be the representative for the state of Louisiana. So Ferguson is arguing on behalf of the state of Louisiana. All right. And he's, but Again, the interesting thing is what he is arguing seems to be diametrically opposed to exactly what they agreed upon the decision to be. Ferguson argued that equal protection didn't mean the quality of the train cars had to be the same. Exactly. That's not what it meant. It meant we need equal opportunity to use public transportation. If I'm sitting in the back of the bus, is that equal opportunity to use public transportation? It's not, right? Did they start a new public transportation system? They did not. So separate but equal was not going to happen relative to the case public transportation. So you can see all kinds of holes in not only the argument, which is diametrically opposed to what the decision was, that racial segregation was constitutional as long as public facilities provided equal services or opportunities. You don't provide an opportunity for me to sit in the front of the bus, so it's not equal opportunity. You don't even provide an opportunity for me to sit on public transportation if a white person comes on board, which creates an inferiority. And it says uh, there, after the highlighted area in the decision, the court said that laws cannot make any race feel less than another. Well, how does sitting in the back of the bus, in case you were wondering where that was, it's right there. Okay. How is sitting in the back of the bus or getting unequal treatment not making me feel inferior, right? It took 58 years for the Supreme Court to overturn Plessy, the Plessy ruling. So it was overturned in 1954, and you've probably heard about that Supreme Court case, Brown versus the Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas. So that is when they overturned the separate but equal, 58 years later, right? It would take then another 10 years to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which outlawed racial segregation and discrimination in public accommodations. Civil Rights Act is an act 
it is not a con it's not part of our constitution and what that means then is is that oh, come on I don't know why it's doing this. Oh, where'd the plusy go? I, I have to look. The, I, I, I lost it. Oh, equal rights. Okay. All right, it's not giving me. The document that I want. Uh -huh. You gotta give me a sec. Okay, sometimes it has a problem grabbing the one that I want. And now, of course, I have a perfect signal now, of course. Oh, no, not anymore. Spoke too soon. Okay, so... What I was saying was, is remember that the Civil Rights Act is an act, which means it needs to be signed back into law. It's current law. Civil Rights Act is current law, but it doesn't mean that it can't be obliterated. Each president has to sign that back in for a period of time for however long they decide to sign it back in for, but otherwise it's no longer law. Remember, it's not part of the Civil Rights Act is not part of our Constitution. It's an act. Okay, remember yesterday we went through this? So Plessy is the prosecution. Ferguson is the defendant, right? So Plessy is bringing his case to Supreme Court. So that's the prosecution. He, he is, bring, he is uh, prosecuting. He is claiming that there has been an offense, an off, right, an offense. Ferguson is saying, no, I'm defending myself and the law and saying there has not been an offense. They're the defense. Segregation violates the 14th Amendment. That would clearly be then 
Plessy's argument, right? Plessy's argument. He's saying this is what he brought to court. The 14th Amendment protects social rights. That's what Plessy was saying, because if you remember what Ferguson was saying, it protects legal right? rights. The 14th Amendment applies only to political and civil rights, not to our social rights. Segregation does not violate the 14th Amendment. Who would have said that? That would have been the defense. No, it doesn't violate it. Plessy was saying it does violate it. Segregation implies inferiority. That was Plessy. That was his whole argument. That's what he was saying. If we look there, Plessy's argument here is... Let's do this in blue. Plessy's argument is separating people based on race implied one race was inferior to the other, right? So we know that's how Plessy felt. Segregation implies inferiority. Segregation does not imply inferiority. That, of course, would be Ferguson. Segregation is unconstitutional. That was what Plessy was saying. So that was Plessy's argument. Segregation is constitutional. That was Ferguson's argument. Now, yesterday, if you remember... We were reading Justice Harlan's dissent. What is a person who dissents? It was the one person in this decision, right? And that seven to one decision Harlan was the one, the one dissenter, right? Okay, so let's look at that argument and break it down. This is such a great exercise. When you listen to somebody and you are like, I have no idea what that person's talking about. What is that person talking about? And break it down. And sometimes I'm going to tell you, their arguments are, as I said yesterday, no sense. They're nonsense. And you don't need to listen to them, right? And when somebody makes a nonsense argument as a politician, you know that's the person I'm not listening to. Like Ted Cruz. That's why nobody listens to Ted Cruz. Because he, he makes no sense. Which means... He's nonsense. He speaks nonsense, which means people shouldn't listen to nonsense, right? Okay, so in this exercise, you can determine whether or not somebody's great big language really is making sense or if it's nonsense, which means I don't need to listen to that person, right? So there's the statement. I am of the opinion that the statue of Louisiana is inconsistent with the personal liberty of citizens, white and black, in that state and hostile to both the spirit and letter of the Constitution of the United States. Now, what do you think about that as a defense? So that's the one person who defended Plessy, right? That was the one person who said... The one person on the Supreme Court of Louisiana. So one of these people, and I didn't look it up, I should have found out which one it was and circled his face, right, to see which one was the dissenter. Probably the one right there in the center, if you ask me, with the Fu Manchu and the great big mustache. I think it was him. I don't know. I can, I can find out. We go to uh, Library of Congress where I got that picture.
Let me see here. So let me just, what, I'm, I'm going to let you watch what I'm doing now. I just didn't want to give you, you know, a bunch of junk. Oh. Okay. So, let me let you see what I'm doing here. So that's what I looked up the other day. And as you can see, it's highlighted. All right. You can see all my history, too. Look at that. I just show that to you. You know why? Because I don't look up anything that's, like, for perverts, except for as it relates to my own personal circumstances. That's where it was. Was it? No, there it is. No, it's not. I saw these and I got that picture of the Supreme Court. It was there and now it's gone. I know that's exactly where it was. Because I saw this picture. amazing pictures but I can't believe I can't find that court there it is okay oh
There is his picture right there. John Marshall Harlan was the one dissenter. Can you see it? Yeah. In his lone dissenting opinion, which would become a classic of American civil rights juris, jurisprudence, Associate Justice John Marshall Harlan insisted that the court had ignored the obvious purpose of the Separate Car Act Well, what, you don't even finish your sentences? Honest to gosh, Britannica. Honestly, you don't even finish your sentences? There, there, there's the next sentence. Because it presupposed. Jeez. What, who, who produced this? Oh my gosh, it is just really just a constant mystery, isn't it? Do we see him? Can we see him in this picture? Let's see. I would have to say he is going to be the guy who is in the first row, second to the end, second in from the right. I'm going to have to say that looks to me like Harlan. Let's take a look at this. Whoops. There he is. Whoops. Let's see what the next picture is. In cases where business interests and workers' rights came into conflict, the court tended to favor business with rare exceptions, even after the Great Depression struck in 1929. When President Franklin D. Roosevelt came to power in 1933, he felt the federal government should act to combat the economic crisis. Emergency measures were passed by Congress, but the court held several unconstitutional let me just say that that right there is a Nazi symbol. That bird right there is a Nazi symbol. Let me just take a look at this over here too, by the way. I'm looking at the Nazi general next to FDR's picture thinking that might not be politically savvy, but I don't know why it's there. Constitution saying too much governmental regulation. The chief executive struck back. Roosevelt asked Congress to give the president the power to enlarge the court so that he could in this way achieve a majority. But there was little support for this idea and Congress defeated it. This actually provoked a constitutional crisis in our country, a, a battle between the legislative and executive on the one hand and the court on the other. Uh, Roosevelt had no recourse except to uh, fight back with the, the rhetoric of a president with public opinion, but public opinion couldn't sway that court because uh, the justices were there for life. He lost that fight. But Roosevelt claimed that he won the war though he lost the battle. And the basis for that claim is that the court did indeed turn more charitable toward the New Deal, even before changes in the personnel took place. The court, between roughly 1890 and 1937, were bad guys in the sense that they were abusing the judicial function by reading too many of their predilections in. What do you do, however, when the issue becomes freedom of association, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, rights of privacy, uh, general liberties that are increasingly far from specific words in the Constitution, but that 
or they're not the economic liberties one's worried about, but they are personal liberties uh, that the new generation of judges were particularly sensitive to. The question of racial equality, as guaranteed under the 14th Amendment, had long been dodged by courts and lawmakers alike. The doctrine in Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896 was that separate but equal facilities fulfilled constitutional requirements. Earl Warren surprised many people by leading a court which reversed previous decisions on equal public facilities and put the court in the center of great controversy. In the mid-50s, in Brown v. Board of Education, the court said that segregated schools were unequal schools and the segregation barriers began to fall. But even though the court can make such decisions, it has no machinery for enforcing them. That requires action by the other two branches. I think the racial discrimination ban in the law, which the court had tried to establish in Brown and the Board of Education, did not really become substantially guaranteed until such laws as the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act of 1966 became law. The court can pronounce the interpretation, but it cannot on its own remake a society. It ultimately depends on popular acceptance and cooperation from the political branches. And that, through the political process, not just the judicial process, ultimately did come through to a significant extent in the development of the 60s. Sense of the knowledge, if you're not familiar with it, is off the charts. The person, the people who put that together could debate the greatest scientists on the side of evolution, and they would win that debate if they had any ability to publicly speak about it. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes they make creationists, intelligent design people look really bad, right? Just simply because they can't. I can 
Can you um, come in here for a minute? This you can come. I'm I'm in the process of packing things up, and I I'm not quite sure exactly. Nope. Yeah, and, if, and I've got my cloak here, and it's just because I'm packing. But I'll show you it right here. So yes, exactly. And and look, at, this is here bigger. So that I'm I'm using these two together right now. I have everything. I have every almost everything of yours. But oh, um, is it blue, a blue cover? Yeah, and here okay. it is right here. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And this is. I mean, I literally am using your look at. Here's your pictures that people aren't seeing. Okay. I mean, I cre I'm crediting you. I tell, I, I, I say everything. I'm not. Um, there's your cell. There's a picture of your cell from the book. So this is what you're mm -hmm. not getting on JW.org, mm -hmm. okay. right? That's. Look at that picture. Who, yeah. who? Even if you're a poor reader, didn't understand, you could get that picture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The um, what they were showing in um, I could pull it up probably. But what they were showing in that book, as far the, the one of the most amazing things you're talking about the intricacy, right? Just quickly, the flower. One of the flowers they're talking about how pollinating, right? Mm -hmm. So here's one flower that's uniquely this does uniquely this. Mm -hmm. We have how many billions, of, right? Or millions of flowers. This one flower does uniquely this. Mm -hmm. It it envelopes envelops the 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 bee when the bee comes in, right? Envelops it for three days, mm -hmm. three days. And the bee's okay because it's giving it nectar and all kind of stuff. And the bee's like, oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. And then in three days, and of course it's three days, of course it's three days, the flower does this. Wow. And the bee walks out. It's mm -hmm. trapped, doesn't mind, three days. And then the flower, and just the bee walks out and then goes and pollinates another one of those flowers. Oh, okay. Okay. Single-celled organisms that you have from the picture in your book. You wouldn't believe it. Glass, single-celled organisms, and the exterior is glass, but not just one little thing. Yeah. All kinds of shapes of oh, glass. Glass. Of and then thing? long shoots of glass. So you've got these things that like make like look like... Um, Waterford crystal oh, wow. in these, right? It looks like Waterford crystal in the water. This is bacteria in the water, right? Mm -hmm. But then they'll also do these long shoots like this of glass with the wow. whatever nuclear, just like, how could it be so different? Why would it be so different? Mm -hmm. You know, so on your, you know, saying what you know, what you learn and what you, what you see, how could you not be a believer? Mm -hmm. And then say, the bottom line is, oh, all by accident. Exactly. And a mutation, by the way. It's not even by accident. We're mutants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They literally use the word mutation. Mm -hmm. We're mutants. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yes, a lot of thought was put into that for sure. But All of your okay. material.
Okay, you probably heard. Uh, I don't know how many times I got kicked off, but that, believe it or not, that is, those were the people who are going to give me my book that I am presenting in our classroom, in our DIY classroom. And I've asked for this book for a very long time, and, and I knew that they would come through. Jehovah Witnesses, they always do come through. It's been a long time, but um, I've been persistent. And so are they. And, and I knew they'd come through. And now I could highlight in the book. And I was so happy because here I was sitting here. Oh, they didn't see the other one. And they noticed this book that I have. Oh, you have that book. Yes, I have that book. And I also have, I'm teaching from this book as well. JW's out there. And I think that I am really um, doing it justice. That was good news for me. That was that made me very, very, very happy. So, okay. I know. I don't even know. Who who's still here? Who's still here? But you got to hear my in-home conversation, didn't you? So that was nice. I, I'm happy about that. Okay. You can tell. Look at my my face hurts from smiling. So Oh, oh, you know, you hear that barking? I got to get Lucy out of the, out of the bedroom upstairs. All right. So let me go ahead and see if you could think about this. See if I could find it. There, there it is. See if you could think about this. Oh, look at, I have my clock up. <laughs> and possibly come up with what they are talking about, right? All right, let me go get Lucy. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> okay. I'm back. My visitor said, oh, it's good that you write things down. Yeah, write things down. Then I don't lose my book where I wrote it down because I packed everything up and now I'll never be able to find it again, that list of books. But why I can't find it right here, I don't know. Yeah, so what did it do to me? Do for me. It's in probably my pink book, and I don't know where my pink one is. <laughs> okay, so. Do to do. It's kind of like um Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, right? Oh, I wonder who's here at the door. 
Oh, it's Jehovah Witness. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Eddie Murphy did one of those. <laughs> no, but somebody did. <laughs> Who could that be? Ding dong. Okay, so I am of the opinion. So meaning what? Meaning It's not fact. There is no evidence. Right? If it is my opinion, that means I don't have any facts or evidence for it. And I don't think that that's a really great argument, right? To have, I don't have any facts or evidence for what I'm saying. I think that there are facts and evidence for what he's saying. I don't happen to think that Harlan's dissent is a strong dissent, is what I'm saying. And the reason why I can say that, I don't believe it's strong, is because that opinion just sounds like a bunch of nonsense, doesn't it? Statute of Louisiana. What is a statute of Louisiana? That is... A law, right? Louisiana law. So here we have a law in place that is subject to opinions. Okay, let's see. Is inconsistent. What does inconsistent mean? Well, it means to not be consistent. Inconsistent. Can you not use a different word? So let's see. The statute of Louisiana, Louisiana is inconsistent. It doesn't work with personal liberties. What are personal liberties? These are freedoms. Personal liberties are freedoms. And these are, the Constitution protects our social freedoms, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Constitution is not about political and civil rights. And oh, by the way, what are civil rights except for social rights? So all this is is just a bunch of nonsense. Even the dissent seems to be filled with a lot of nonsense. Hostile. Hostile, I would say. is angry, but also defensive. If you're hostile, it's in response to something else, right? Okay. Spirit of the Constitution of the United States. I would have to say, what is that? That would be the spirit of the Constitution of the United States. That would be feelings of U.S. Citizens. Letter of the Constitution of the United States. That would be laws. The letter of the Constitution, they are laws. So what is Harlan saying? Summarize the excerpt in your own words. It's saying, if I were to put this in my own words, I would say that what this is saying is
Oui. Ooh. Easy in, huh? Law. Doesn't provide for freedoms of its citizens. And this makes people angry. When there are injustices, those injustices make people angry. And really, the bottom line of this exercise really is, why didn't Harlan say that? That the anger that is, pro that is the outcome of this unfair law that the, I'm sorry, the injustice of this unfair law makes people angry and this response is justified. It's justified. People's anger because of this law is justified. Civil disobedience is justified. That's what Harlan should have said. But instead, you heard what he said. All of this nonsense. I am the of the opinion, meaning don't give this any clout or don't give it any weight at all. It's only an opinion that this law of Louisiana violates freedoms of its citizens and that makes people angry. Harlan, just saying, John Harlan, just saying, you could have said it easier. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. <laughs> I'm thinking of the people who visited me to say thank you so much for what they've done. They didn't see my questions young people ask and like my whole library of books that I have uh, studying um, Yeah, they don't like the King James Version of the Bible, though. They weren't, they're not so impressed by that. But I do have their Bible, too. I just, uh, yeah, what? Whatevs. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hopefully, I'll find that pink little notebook, and then I will be able to give them some more recommendations or requests, not recommendations, requests of the books that I'm looking for. So this is Dr. Annette Fairwich. Thank you so much for uh, being here in the bookless classroom where I just got some exciting news and you were a little witness to that. Um, I appreciate that. All right. See you tomorrow. That's not what she wants. <laughs>